Hi. Today we're going to do two hands anyhow variations. Before we get to that, we have to start with the bent press. So the bent press, it's, it goes back uh, well over 100 years, 150 years or so, maybe who knows if longer. But it's usually a way that people work on it enough. It's the heaviest. Um, they can lift the heaviest weight overhead with one arm with this technique. Uh, and then typically the two hands anyhow is done by doing a, a bent press with the first arm and then bending down to curl the weight up with the second arm and then press it and then, so I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. We'll start with the bent press. Now, uh, You can say that it's not really uh, much of a press. It's a, uh, some people I call like an active, uh, a feat of supports, a support feat. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, so, so just for reference here, um, sometimes I'm gonna be demonstrating with a very light bell. They're, they're all, these are all the same size. This one's 24 kilograms or 53 pounds. The next one I'll be using is 35 pounds, and which uh, together doing both of them would make about half of my best at this. And then I have one that's four kilograms. It's, it's real easy for me to demonstrate with that I may use. Anyways, uh, the reason I say that is you, you need a bell that's gonna give you some feedback. And I'll, I'll show you some common mistakes on, on why that is. Of course, you don't start off real heavy, but um, you don't need to start off super light either. So that's funny. So get your bell, clean it. Now I usually do the clean to the hip. Okay, I'll turn to the side now. Then it slips back, the elbow slips back. So now I'm not pushing it at all. You hear my breathing, it's, it's pretty relaxed. It should probably start to tighten up, but my form is vertical. I just kind of like screw myself down into the ground. You can uh, touch or not touch or whatever. And then I'm going to drop my hips a little bit before I push the weight back up. Okay, then lower it. So the alternative version would be to do it this way. Okay, so I was just here. I started it here with the first one. The second one is this way. And then down. Okay. Either one is okay. I think I like the first variation better. I think you'll be able to do more weight with it. It makes more sense as a support feat because it's more than support because we're, we're moving the, we're moving, okay. <laughs> Um, but when, when we're thinking of the supports, let's switch hands here. And you'll notice I, I use this with the uh, handle this way up most of the time now for my cleans. You can do this way too, tilt it, tilt it down this way. Um, I've just been doing mostly this way these days, but I switched up. So, anyways, so if I go to here, the, it's already on the bone. I'm already in support the weight <laughs> mode with my structure. Okay. So the hips go down and then up. So <clears throat> I'm gonna use the really lightweight now so I can speak when I'm doing that. So I'll say like these, these techniques here uh, are good for wrestlers. Uh, martial arts of, of all sorts, I think, because you're building strength at these awkward angles, and it's you're, you're balancing. It's um, uh, high center of gravity it can be awkward, especially when we start getting into the second bell and variations of that. I think yoga practitioners, if you're if you're just practicing yoga, um, which I have a lot of uh, respect for, I, I've 
I got my first two yoga books in, in 1994 at a Grateful Dead concert. I, I have a lot of respect for yoga, but uh, it can also, depending on who's teaching, it can be a practice that damages people too. A lot of people hurt themselves because they're just trying to like stretch more range of motion and they're not building real strength at that range of motion. That doesn't mean every teacher does that, but it's very common um, to just like want to stretch more and more, but they're not strong at those end ranges. So a lot of these techniques, every technique that I show with the kettlebells develops the strength throughout the whole range of motion, the stability, it's the safe, like you, you may have heard me say before, strength and safety is it's, it's the same thing. So let me grab this other bell. So this one's just four kilograms, like nine pounds. So I want to talk for a minute when I'm doing these. So when you do the queen, now at first your form is not really vertical. Okay, this would be a vertical form. We don't do kettlebells like that because that's not, <laughs> um, it's not good for the shoulder. It's too much torque on the shoulder. It's not efficient. Uh, but the bell should be over the hips. Okay, both ways pretty much, right? Okay, now if you're doing the other way, the hard style way, you see how my shoulder's down, not my right shoulder? Okay, so bell is still over my hip, but now it's out in front of me a little bit more compared to like, you see that? Okay, so the first way from the elbow on the hip, clean it, okay, now it's supporting because Remember, these, this can be the heaviest weight you lift with one arm. So, and it takes a while to do it. Okay, this is not a fast lift, it, it takes a while. So we'll clear it to the hip, clean it to the hip rather, and then start to slide around. Huh, the bell's still over my hip. You see that? And now my form is vertical. Okay, so maybe you're just practicing like this for a minute. Okay. <clears throat> You don't want to like be, so clean it, comes around, and then eventually the elbow clears the hip, slips off. I am contracting my lats as hard as I can. Okay, I'm, because it keeps the shoulder packed. A lot of the strength in this technique is coming from the lats. The stability comes from the lats. <clears throat> There's more than that to it, but if you just think contract your lat really hard, you're, you're on the right track. Okay, so here, kettlebell is over my hips. So I start to turn it still over my hips. And now my form is vertical. Even though I'm not even thinking about that. But anyways, and you see my knee. So my right knee stays locked out for most of this. And my left knee will bend a little. And as I come down, like, I'm gonna relax my arm. I'm not pushing at all. You see how, how much room there is? Now, um, let me go down a little bit further. My arm is relaxed. I am not pushing into the bell at all. See how like, relaxed my arm is? It's, my arm is resting on my lat. If I go to shrug my shoulder up, see what happens there? Like, but here, okay, I am not pushing into the bell. If my arm is resting on my body. This is a key point. Can you see that? <laughs> Hold my elbow list. Now let me go down a little bit further. Same thing. The, my arm, look, up and down, up and down. That's as far down as it goes. Okay. This is, of course, you're not supposed to be pumping at it. I'm just trying to demonstrate. Okay. And then here, like, I'm trying to get the bell down. It's not going. Okay. Of course, it can come this way. All right. I'm trying to demonstrate how much your lat is involved and how this is a feat of supports, okay? Or a, a support feat, to put it in more modern language. <clears throat> Strong men from the late 1800s were doing this. Um, um, Eugenie Sendow um, was one of them, and the guy who has the world record um, did um, like 390 some pounds supposedly, um, Arthur Saxon. Um, the official record is like 371 pounds. That's with a barbell, 
Um, <clears throat> it's crazy. Is it true? I don't know. Um, but other strongmen of the time accepted that as true, and he weighed like 205 or 210 pounds. I think that was in 1910 or something like that. So you can do crazy amounts of weight. I haven't got that yet, but <clears throat> I've done you know a lot more than this. So it, it's a cool technique. So again, with the, this really light one here. <clears throat> so if I'm here, this, that's not good. I don't want my my forearm vertical here. I want the bell over my hip. My fist is under my chin. Okay, the bell is over my hip pretty much. It could be a little bit like more, but this is okay right here. <clears throat> you, you don't want to lean back. That's what I meant to say. You don't want to lean back where I could, where I said it could be more over my hip. Is it, don't worry about it too much, <clears throat> but, <laughs> but do worry about it at the same time. So then as you, you'll have one foot forward a little bit. Let me get this out of the way. So you start off even, but then as you go to turn, your feet turn a little bit too. See my, my right foot is still pointing what was forward, okay, towards the camera. My left foot is now pointing out at a 45 degree angle. And my arm goes from here to vertical. And then I start my way down. The kettlebell should pretty much stay in the same spot and I'm moving under it. You can have maybe a palm flat, maybe down. Maybe you can do put your elbow here if that's not comfortable. It's gonna depend on your mobility. At first, this will help you with your mobility. Do it with nice, lightish, mediumish weight to work on your mobility. Okay. Then drop your hips and then the bell goes up. Okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you with the other, just a little <laughs> heavier weight again because it gives a little bit better feedback of what the lift is really like. So, most of the time I'm just gonna be demonstrating from the bell, from the elbow on the hip, because when we start doing a barbell with it, you're gonna start off your barbell that way also. That's gonna be some videos down, I don't know when. So just watch, I'm not gonna say anything this time, I will, um, let me turn at this angle. I think this might be a little bit better for you. So both my feet are pointing the same direction right now. Now they're not. I don't know if this angle will help you. Okay, so it's called the bent press. It's a really cool technique. A lot of, you know, when I say that these techniques are good for martial artists and people that are into yoga, it's not just because this is good for those muscles or it's, it's like it has a Zen component too. And there's a beauty and dignity in the technique that there is in yoga, that there is in martial arts. It's, uh, there can be a crudeness to it also, but there's the beauty and the dignity in these techniques and um, they, they can provide tremendous benefit. Today is the first day I've done these in a long time. I did just like a couple practice ones before I started the video, literally just a couple of them. And now I want these back in my, my program regularly. Uh, it, 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 just, it just feels so good to do. So the bent press, again, key point, this is the light bell. <laughs> so if you're cleaning this way and having the elbow or the, this palm 
or towards you at a 45 degree angle, you can do that. Okay, so this is uh, this way without the elbow on the hip. Now, <clears throat> sometimes I like to do stuff this way instead of this way because when you're doing martial art, so just think about my, if I don't have the kettlebells in my hand. Like, it's like boxing, right? It's like punching. So it's good for martial arts to have your, your hands up here. Okay, see the angle of my forearms? Just keep it there, keep it there. Whoa! Mind blown. Okay. So when I'm talking about things being good for martial arts, you kind of have to know a lot to know a lot. Uh, I'm not saying eh, enough, enough, enough of that. So bent press. Think about the bell not going anywhere. See my palm pretty much stays in the same spot. Sink that hip and then lift it back up. Push back up with your legs. There should not be um, a common mistake. Let me do that. So we'll go over some common mistakes before we go to the second bell. So a common mistake is um, like pressing the belt like that. So there's a technique called the side press. That's kind of it. <clears throat> um, there's nothing wrong with doing this. It's a safe technique, but it's not the same as what we're doing. Okay, I recommend starting here, sliding it around and down. Another common mistake is once you're here, to come down with it this way. Okay, then you're you're out. <laughs> you're already out of business. So when you come down, get used to having that formed. Go to vertical. Just practicing that for a while. Um, it would be a good start because this is a technique that takes a while for people to learn and it, it's worth it. it it's, it's worth it to take the time. I think that about covers it. This is one we could do like keep digging and keep digging, but a lot of it's going to be your practice. Um, last thing on this, um, and, and don't like go here and then press it out either. It's not that. You're moving yourself under the bell. Okay. Now, two hands anyhow. So there's basically the rules for the two hands anyhow is you get one weight overhead with one arm and then the other one overhead with one arm anyhow you can. Okay, these go back a long time. So, I'm gonna do it the what you normally think of as the two hands anyhow, what you'll you'll typically see if you if you Google it. I'm gonna start with the bent press. And then uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate once and then I'll break it down more. So this is uh, 53 pounds, 24 kilograms, and this is 35 pounds. I'm just showing you for reference. It's not like to it's like roughly half of my best or less probably. The setup, I'll go ahead and explain the setup. So the setup, I want this second bell by my shin so I can slide my leg down to grab it. So I'm just looking at the top bell. Go get the top bell. See, now I, I have weight going into my, you should always look at the top bell. I have weight going into this hand, my left hand. So that I'm supporting myself with my left arm also. Sink down, back up, lower the second bell. <clears throat> so 
Um, my knee has a little bit of swelling in it. I can't squat down all the way, but um, let me see what I can do here. Sometimes you'll see, yeah, I can't really do it <laughs> that way right now. But sometimes you'll see people squat, I'll squat down so much that the, the, I can't even demonstrate it very well. <clears throat> but basically you can squat down farther. I don't want to mess my knee up showing you what to do. So the bent press is still the same. Then when you're there, you can, you can take a minute to support that weight. Okay, take, you don't want to rush these. You're always looking at the top bell. So if I have this bell somewhere else and I start having to fiddle around for it, you're going to drop that next, that other bell. So I need to put it where you're going to find it, which is sliding down your leg. It's right there. You can use that for a support. This is real strong here. This is a good way to do it. You have, you can support your arm with your knee. If you need to, you can, it's, it's a real strong support. Then curl it up and lift it and press it up. So, again. So we start off with this weight is in front. And that way I can get a, a I can swing it back and, and get a good clean first. So that's why they're not um, lined up even. Okay. So I need this one because I need to get a good swing and clean. And then I need this one here. So I know I'll find it every time. Um, so again, You may see me like pressing it out a little bit. Um, you want to minimize that. It's going to happen with almost everybody, but you want to minimize that. So uh, let me do this ankle for you. So switch the hands with 24 kilogram. This one, 35. Now you can do them with the same weight. Typically, you'll be able to do more weight with the first hand than the second hand. But use what you have and you know nobody's going to throw you in jail for uh, switching it up and using the lightweight first you know depending on what you have i try to have these videos so no matter what equipment you have <clears throat> the size weights you can figure it out make it work so I'm not in a rush here. Take your time, take your time, get the balance. Now I feel safe to sink down, curl it up and lift. And then press. And then down. And then from here, you kind of just let it drop. I'm going to put that in my balance, make sure everything looks nice. Balance. <coughs> Beauty and the dignity of the technique. It's, it's a really great technique. <clears throat> now, if you have, let's see what's key points for that one. The bent press, it's the same. Take your time when you're bracing, when, you, when you're finding, you don't wanna be in any hurry. Nice and slow. This is Zen. This is yoga. This is mindfulness. Okay. Now, once you get that second width, so I started about talking here, started out, we're here. Okay. Then once we lift that second weight, we're here. So we're back to this. Okay, so even though I might start off this way, when I when I have 
this other weight in my hand, we're, we're squared up. This is the posture. It's real stiff. Glutes are contracted. Abs are contracted. Everything is nice and tight. I'm gripping the ground with my feet. My heels are going into the ground. Everything is balanced. Breathing. What's the breathing? Basically, <clears throat> when you're under the most pressure, hold your breath and then exhale at the towards the top. Now, if you have like heart problems, breathing problems, if you have high blood pressure, there, there's other reasons, there's some re medical reasons why you don't want to hold your breath on this or anything else. But typically, when we're down here, I can breathe here. This is okay. Okay. Now I can like lower myself down a little bit. I'm, I'm doing this. Hold the breath. Okay, now I can breathe again once I'm here. You're better off holding the breath from here to here. Okay? unless there's a medical reason for you not to. Um, and you don't want, even if you don't have a medical reason, don't hold your breath for more than a couple seconds. That shouldn't take more than a couple seconds, but you don't want to pass out. And so be safe, take your time working through these. Now, the technique that I got from uh, Thomas Inch, he was a, a old time strong man. Maybe some of the stuff he did was fake, but uh, I saw him do this technique uh, as his two hands anyhow. And he was doing a barbell, I think, and a, and a dumbbell, a big dumbbell. And I, I really liked it. So let's say this is a weight, or maybe because of a, a knee issue or something like that, that you can't get all the way down into the this squatting position to to more like curl the weight up you can do this so this is the same and curl to the hip clean to the hip brother okay see i'm not going to go down this far okay because this uh left hold the breath now i can breathe again now so now we're acting like the weight, this weight is too heavy for me to curl. That's why I did that. So I'm going to kick it up with my knee and then press it. And then here, down, up. Okay. So again, maybe it's a mobility thing or it's a, a weight thing. It's too heavy for you to. You know, really get down and do this with it. You can just get to here. So I'm, I'm, I have weight going into this bell. And then you can just lift it up and use that to, <laughs> messed up a little bit, use that kip to get the bell up. I think that's a really cool technique. It looks neat. And you can definitely do more weight. <clears throat> So um, that may be uh, a safer one to start with if you're getting used to this. So let me let me show you again. It stays in the same place because I want when I reach down to grab it, I, I want it to be there. So I'm going to need it for support first. Now I know I'm not using maximum weights here. I'm using demonstration weights. But when you start really pushing yourself. Uh, you'll want um, that, that stability. And it's kind of like a, a checkpoint, <laughs> like, okay, now you can not relax, but you need to like do a, a scan of your body, make sure everything is in the right position. So, uh, what's your breathing doing? Are you breathing right? Are, you, um, are your bones lined up right? Here we go. Same one. So now we're just act, acting again, like this one's too heavy for me to curl at the bottom, or, or I can't squat down low enough. <clears throat> OK. 
okay? I like that variation a lot. That's probably the one to start with, but play around with it, depending on the weights you have, your mobility, experience, I don't know. Play around with both of them, see what's right for you. Now, the as far as lowering the second bell, which would probably be your lighter one. So this weight's overhead. Okay, so you're here, you have the weight overhead. Now when you go to start to drop this one, go down with it, okay? Don't, uh, grab this one, <laughs> this is the light one. Um, don't just like, don't let it snap. Okay, you'll find when you keep that tension there, and you start to lower, it'll just kind of go down by itself. <laughs> okay, gravity <laughs> will be uh, fully up in, uh, in full operation. So when you're here, and you start to bend over, let it go this way, all right? So just don't let it, don't let it jerk you first. Don't just do that. Start to bend, and there should be tension in it, this arm anyway, and it'll go down slow. Okay, don't let it snap. <clears throat> now, even my arms out a little bit. So, I know this can be, a, this is a lot. If, if you're not familiar with this technique, this is a lot and I'm gonna, <laughs> moving on from it also. So this is something you can like watch again, practice it, record yourself, watch again and see how it, how it matches up. Get used to the bent press, get used to the, um, get used to that first, get used to that first. <clears throat> Progress like wisely and you can build tremendous strength with these. And I think you'll see it uh, transfer to your grappling experience and then your, your your yoga. So most of the time when you're in the more uh, difficult yoga postures, you're supposed to be breathing uh, evenly through them. All right. If you're, if you're holding too much tension in your uh, fancy yoga move, um, I, I don't, that's, I don't think that's what you're really supposed to be doing, but this can help you develop that mindfulness because some of the, the difficulty is in uh, the, resisting the urge to panic a little bit, the resisting the urge to hurry. So, uh, again, so this one's in front this time for my left arm, not going with my left. And I'm going to show uh, both variations, the one where I'm going to squat down. Again, I can't squat down as much as I would if my knee didn't have a little swelling, but I'm gonna do the one where I squat down and curl. And then uh, right after that one, I'm going, going to do the one as if this one's too heavy to, to do that technique or I can't get down to do that technique. Notice my breathing. I'll try to exaggerate it, but it's also not really exaggerating because your breathing could be pretty loud. It's the first one. Next one. The bent press is the same. Okay. I'm not going to squat down this time. I'm going to start with my lower my hips, and then lift the bell up. Here we 
the hips. And get a good for developing the abs. <laughs> if you said yes, you are correct. <clears throat> so, bent press. With the one, uh, we do it with the one bent weight. Two hands anyhow, adds the second. There's one where we squat down all the way, and there's one where we don't. Now, the second bell, I was, once I got it up here, however it was, once I got to this position, I was pressing it up strictly. I was pressing it up strictly. Well, what if you have weight that's, it's too heavy to do that? We can introduce the push jerk. Okay, this is cool. Um, so you'll be able to do even more weight than this. Uh, even more weight than being able to press it, rather. So now I'm going to do the technique as if this weight is too heavy to curl at the bottom to get down far enough. It's not so much as a, a curl as it is you're bending that far down to get it. Okay, you're not, but if you have a dumbbell, <clears throat> maybe that's what you do. Okay, so let me show that one real quick. So this dumbbell is gonna be the same. So it's lower, than the, the handle of the kettlebell, right? It's very low. <laughs> so watch. I should have kept my eyes on the bell, top bell the whole time. I was looking to see what it looked like in the camera. But, so it may very well be a curl. You're here and you just curled up like you're doing regular <laughs> concentration curl. Okay, see the difference? There's the concentration curl. There's the, I just get low enough so I just have to do that and get it to here. You see the continuum of that? And then there's the, I can't get down that far because this bell's too heavy, this bell's too heavy, maybe it's my mobility, whatever. And then I lift it up this way with no curl at all until I get to here, and then I kip it up with my knee. Okay. Then the drop, top bell, just lift that lower. Okay, I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, but you can watch it over and over and <laughs> it should keep you entertained for a while. Now, back to where I was before or back to where I wasn't yet, rather. So now we're gonna say that this weight so I'm back to using the 53 pound and 35 pound just for, I think it helps to know what like the weights are so you can see the feedback that's going on. Um, and so like using that bell, that, that's just gonna behave differently. I can do like weird things with this kettlebell that aren't gonna happen with the heavier ones. So you'll see it, they behave a little bit differently. <laughs> um, so, now this way it's too heavy for me to press. So I'm going to jerk it when once, and this hand's already gonna be up. So it goes like this. 
And I'll always make sure that's that's gonna be right right where I want it. So I don't wanna have to look for it because now I'm using even heavier weights, okay? Potentially, right? So first one. They're real heavy, so now we've got to make sure we take our time. We can't waste time, but we take our time to break. So we may need to make sure we're in the right position. Okay. Now it's, this is too heavy to curl, remember? So I'm keeping it up, and I can't press it anymore. Um, I can't press this one, it's too heavy, so I'll dip down. That way. Okay. So, or just dip down and push. So that's a push press where a jerk is push, dip, push, all right? And you can also lower the bells that way if you need to, instead of lowering one and then the other. If you're going for max technique, that'll shave some time off of having those heavy weights overhead. So again, so this is your, this is what you'll be able to do the most weight overhead. Um, and it gets, it gets awkward when you're, when you have one weight overhead and you're trying to jerk that, jerk the other one up. <clears throat> it, it feels weird. Work up to it, of course. I don't have to tell you right that, that right. Uh, wise progressions is what it's all about. I recommend you rarely truly max out. Most of the time stick to that like 80% 80, 80 range, 70, 80, 90%, 80, 90, 95 back. Okay, let's max out today, feeling it. Okay, now back to 80%, 90%. And I don't keep track of my percentages as in, okay, this is 80% of my one rep max. I think more of, uh, you can do that, uh, but, you're not gonna have, typically with kettlebells, we have almost any size you could want, but you might not have that exact 85% that's in some program. So think about your uh, more of an 80% of an effort from you rather than a particular weight that it has to be. You can do that too, I'll, I'll get into that stuff at some point, but Hovering between like 70 and 90 is where I think most of your strength training should be, 70 to 90 percent. Here we go, same thing. No rush. See, I pressed it out a little bit because I didn't go down this far. It's not the end of the world. Now, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'll show the other ones, maybe you have mobility issues, something. All right, so now I'm here. I'm always looking at the top bell. So from here, I'm gonna sink my hips down. And then I look at the front. Okay, so this is the weight was too heavy to curl. Use my knee to kip it up. It's too heavy to press. So I have tension in my abs, my glutes, my feet. Everything is stable. Dip, drive, dip. Okay, and that'll happen faster. Okay, or just dip and drive. All right, so let's say we're here, starting to wear out, lower them both at the same time, nice and controlled. Make sure your feet are wide enough for both bells to get through. Okay, <clears throat> you may notice I hit my leg, not very hard. Um, as if it's on the way back. <clears throat> now in here, we don't have any mirrors. I don't like lifting in front of a mirror. I think it's distracting. I can see myself on this video here. So I need to make sure my, <laughs> I stay in the shot. Um, but on your way down, let me just go over that position for a second here. Yeah. So down, if you end up here, you're not sure Okay, make sure your knees are wide as you, as you clear the weight. <clears throat> so, key point, 
stability. Okay. At each point, at each, there's like a, it's like a vista point. Uh, you can kind of like stop to take a picture kind of, right? So once I'm, <coughs> use the, this thing again, just telling you, cause it's, it's going to look different. Uh, this is the nine pounder. So, so uh, here, just this technique here. Um, and my feet. So here, let's turn, you can turn that foot out. Okay. And then it goes from here to vertical. And you're just like screwing yourself down. Okay. So now here, maybe that was tough. Maybe we start to lose our balance. We can stabilize here. Stop to take a picture. It's a vista point. And then I'm going to drop my hips. Okay. Before I come up. I don't want to. Oh, actually, this is a technique I'm going to show next. But I don't want to just go this way. Oh, it's, a, it's a lot of, it's too much right here. Dip my hips and then go this way. Okay. <clears throat> and then up. Okay. I know it's a lot, but trust me, once you start digging in, so what's the difference between the, the beginner and the advanced? It's the amount of time doing it. But if you could use kettlebells for 50 years, and if you've never done that technique, it's still your first day doing that technique. So even if it's your first, this is your first ever video watching kettlebells, give it a try. It's okay. Use the appropriate weight, but don't be afraid of it as thinking like, oh, it's something you do when you're more advanced. Okay. When you're more advanced, you'll just use a heavier weight. That's all. <clears throat> what was I going to say? Oh. That windmill. So I was saying that when you're when you're here to uh, the bells up here, now not to uh, just do it this way. <laughs> now I'm saying you can do that way. We're going to do typ typically not when you're doing the, the two hands anyhow, but you can. So I'm going to show you. Another technique. It's called the windmill. And this will be the, the last. Um, actually, I'll, I'll, because we're, we're talking about yoga a little bit, I'm going to show um, something at the end. Hopefully, I remember. I hope I haven't been going on too long here. I don't remember what time I started actually. It's okay. Uh, so the windmill, you get the bell overhead however you can. Okay, maybe it's just a press. Now you tilt your feet. So if I'm facing towards the camera, now I've picked my left foot foot is pointed towards the wall and my right foot is more at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to keep my abs right here tight, straight line. Maybe that's all I get for now. Working on that mobility in the hip. Maybe it's just right here. Okay. And then little by little, more and more. And maybe that takes days, months, a year. Okay. And you want to make sure that stays tight. Okay. I don't know if you can see what I mean, but basically don't allow your body to do this. Like, I don't know if it's hard to see, but don't allow lateral spinal flexion. So keep this angle tight. I think you can see better if I don't have a shirt obscuring. So the bell gets overhead, however. Okay, like this way and not, I think it's this other bell. 
So this is what you should not do. Okay, you see this line here, my sternum, chest, and my abs. Okay, even that's not like real bad, but compared to this, now you see that straight line? That's what we want instead of that. See what I mean? So keep that real tight. And maybe this is all you get. That's okay. Little by little. So weight gets overhead. Now, you can also, when you're working on this, put one arm behind your back. So my, I'm facing towards the camera and my feet are pointing towards the right wall. My right foot is pointing straight towards it. My left foot is at more of a 45 degree angle, but it can be pretty much, doesn't have to be exactly that. Okay, does that look good or bad? That's bad, right? Okay, so key point is I want my hip to go back and not to the side. Okay, this can help. Maybe that's all you get, just a little bit. Okay, so you have your windmill that way, and then you can go all the way down. Okay. You can add the second bell to the windmill. Okay. For a long time, keep this separate from the two hands anyhow. I might have, maybe I should have shown it this on a different video. But since I'm already in it, I'm going to stick with it because it's there's some similarities, and you can this isn't wrong to do it in two hands anyhow. It's developing, it's just a different skill. So this bell is in the same spot as so I know that when I reach down, it's gonna be there. So the first bell gets overhead, however. I'm looking at the bell, and then I lift up that second bell. Maybe this is all you get. If so, that's okay. Okay, you'll build tremendous abdominal strength that way. Also, mobility in the hips. Good for the legs, good for everything. Good for the mind, beauty, dignity, technique. <clears throat> so I did notice, uh, you know, speaking like the quality of these videos, I, and I was talking about before about the lighting and stuff and how I'm, you know, working to improve everything. I did notice that when I wear dark clothes, <laughs> the video looks better and be in this particular spot. So I think I've kind of got it figured out. Um, it's hard to get good natural light, especially when it's dark outside and you're inside. But uh, that, I, I may dig in more into the windmill on another episode, but that pretty much is it for now. Um, one more thing, so if you're talking about yoga, and I showed this on another video, I don't wanna, I will repeat myself some on videos. <laughs> that was the I will repeat myself some on videos, but like I just did. When in, in yoga, there's a lot of pushing, but there's not much pulling. So if you can even just hang from a bar, if you can do pull-ups, um, then great, or just hang from a bar if you can't do pull-ups. Try to like get a step up or something, do your pull-up, just hold it here or hold it here, here, however you can to just really pull down. Uh, a key point I may have skipped in in these is you always make sure your your shoulders stay down. I'm sure I mentioned it because I was talking about the lats, contracting the lats as hard as possible. That goes with both arms. Okay, so here I need to be contracting my lats. I'm trying to put my shoulder in my hip. I'm trying real hard to do that because I want my shoulder to be safe. And that's how, how to do it. It's one of the ways to keep it safe. Now in this one, it's the same thing. I don't want my shoulder to be shrugging up here. Everything is locked in, okay? You want your shoulders just down. 
Um, you can think like uh, ears or shoulder poison. So if you start to go for that second bell, and this one's up here, and this one's up here, you're you're asking for trouble. Okay, go slow. Just make sure you keep your shoulders towards your hips on everything. <clears throat> Um, so back to the yoga and the, it's a lot of pushing. Um, it would be good to add rowing, other pulling techniques besides like if you don't have a pull-up bar, um, you can't do a pull-up, whatever, you can just do rows. So rowing, which I've covered before, but I'll cover it some more. Make sure your back stays neutral, get not too arched and not um, flexed, not extended or flexed. And I like to do different angles. And I like to switch hands every rep sometimes. So you might do a set of two, five. <sighs> but lately, sort of with clients too, just like, see that angle? Switch over. I'm going to do a different angle. Okay, I still want my shoulders driven towards my hip. Underhand grip, palm forward. forward. Okay, you'll feel it in your back different ways. So add pulling to your yoga. I think I'm going to wrap that up here. I will um, yeah, I will demonstrate one more time. Okay. Just the back press. Cling to the hips as you turn the toes forward. Drop the hips and back up. Okay. So once you're here, drop the hips and back up instead of just pushing up this way. Okay. You're here, drop the hips back up. <clears throat> Two hands anyhow. Variation one. Hip drop. Okay. Now, two hands anyhow. Variation two. Um, we'll use if we don't can't get down all the way, or this bell is too heavy to curl like that, or maybe this bell is too heavy to get down all the way. Whatever. This is variation number two. I'll always make sure my shoulders are in the right position. Everything's safe. Drop my hips, look forward, up. Keep it up. My glutes and abs are contracted hard. Feet are gripping the ground. Press it up, down. Look back up at the top bell. Let it drop as you're squatting down. Hips drop as you look forward, push up. And then drop. Switch arms again. Hope you can keep up with my arm switch here. Um, now this one, this bell is too heavy to strictly press. Variation three.
push press. Jerk. That has that second dip in it. Look up at the top bell. Make sure everything's safe. Drop the hips. Now, these techniques take a while to do just one rep. So what happens when you get to the top of both, you need to bring them down at the same time. Let's do that. So went through the whole thing here. Now it's, okay, I can't lower them the way I did before one at a time. Have to lower both at the same time. Make sure you do it safely here. Make sure the feet are wide enough. Knees go out. Bells go down. Okay. And uh, just keep working on that. And even since, like I, like I said, it's been a while since I've done these. Uh, they, they take a while to really get. So here. <laughs> Practice that, get good at that. It's just that throws people off. Okay, then it slides off. Look, so even though that's 35 pounds, listen to my voice. Okay, I'm gonna get on farther. It's 35 pounds, like, it's just resting. See me bouncing it? I'm not pushing it back up, it's just bouncing. Don't try that. See my shoulders are driven towards my hips. They're not shrugging up. Like I'm shrugging up a little bit here. It doesn't feel right at all. So yeah. All right. Look up. Drop the hips. Okay. These are tricky. It takes time. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.